you're driving along, do 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 do, and you're like, oh my god, I'm out of coolant, and my car is about to blow up. It's so hot. It's uh, what would you call that when it's beyond H? Super H? Anyhow, but if you got one of these things that plug into the OBD2 port and gives you a live data, the coolant temperature says 89, 90 degrees Celsius, which I believe in Fahrenheit is about 194, something like that. But another thing that's interesting where in your, this is an Audi uh, TT 2000 model. And uh, there's a little thing you can do in your climate control, which I got it set to, I'll show you. Um, this is regular temperature mode for the HVAC or the climate control, which is set to 70. If you want to get to the, uh, what they call like a secret mode, um, you hold down the circulation and the up, and it'll bring you, actually it won't bring you to that, it'll, um, if I can reset it again, I'll reset it. Okay. Anyhow, what it's supposed to do is you hold these two and it's supposed to display one. Yeah, let me go back. It's because I've already had it set. Let me just turn the car off. Let's start all over. Okay. you want that mode you hold these two keys and it gives you this channel uh, which is 1c you need to go up to 49 which you hold with the temperature uh, switch Oops. Um, and then you press the recirculation button and then it'll tell you the temp this I believe is about one um, a or 250 54 or 56 of degrees Fahrenheit which I guess what it's doing it's reading whatever the instrument cluster is telling me but that's inaccurate I'm actually pulling um, let me go back since I restarted the go car I had to I have to re-scan this this one you just go in regular yeah, that's the warning telling me my coolant is low or it's overheating, whatever that stupid symbol means. Um, so with mine, I go to live data, and it goes in and this reads directly from the ECU. So I go down, it gives me all the different values like fuel trim and my O2 sensor and other stuff. Um, then I go down to what the EC, ECU is pulling, and it says the engine uh, um, coolant temperature, temperature is 87 degrees Celsius, which I guess that's around 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Which uh, is uh, interesting because, you know, you, it, if this is wrong... And uh, you're driving around and then you realize, hey, you know, this is bad. I need to get it fixed, I know. Or you don't care and you just drive it that way. The only problem with that is, what if you do have a problem with your water pump, your thermostat, whatever. And, and then it does actually get to this temperature. Well, you wouldn't know. So uh, that's probably what happened to this car. Because when I got it, uh, let me shut this off, is... Um, well, let me want to turn it on and see it just goes right back to that. But anyhow, when I got the car, um, it didn't even run. And uh, from what I uh, was told, it could have been just a head gasket or the timing belt or whatever. So, this is what really happened. Is, this is the, the block that was in there. And right down here, if you can see that, there's a little chunk... Get the camera on there. A little chunk right here missing on the edge. Which is supposed to look, you know, like that. So, 
that's what he did. Uh, you know, the, the instrument cluster, he didn't fix it. And he ran the car, overheated, uh, and then, of course, he thought it was normal because the gauge didn't read, read accurately. And then, uh, you know, it fried uh, the engine. So what I did is I just ripped it all apart, and I found another short block with about 100,000 miles on it, put it all back together. And uh, this is where it is. I cleaned it up, put a little paint here and there, whatever. Um, it has some aftermarket stuff on here. It's got a, like a got this uh, turbo tube and uh, it's got an APR uh, diverter valve and a couple lightweight uh, aluminum pulleys I think on the alternator and the um, power steering pump so um, I've been uh, you know I just got this back together a couple days ago and it seems like everything's running properly I do see, it's like, I don't know if this is normal, it does have a slight, I guess it's letting off the pressure. I don't know if you can hear that. But it's uh, kind of like a little air noise, because I know when I undo it, it goes away. Normally, it goes away. Maybe not this time, probably has too much pressure on it, because it's normal temperature. And then I noticed there was, this was broke. There's a little vacuum thing down here and trying to repair that goes to this canister. Um, so I believe that's part of the EVAP system. Something, you know, something to do with vacuum. I don't know what the hell this thing's supposed to do. I might just bypass it. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, that's, uh, oh, this thing right here, uh, I got to replace the slave cylinder for the clutch um, because it's leaking. But what I did, if you need to bypass the safety switch, because this car won't start. Uh, most Audis are this way, probably if all. Um, is you have to see a safety switch that goes to this clutch. There's two switches, one here. Um, that I believe is probably acts with your cruise control. So if you push the clutch in, it, it deactivates it. Um, and then this switch here, it goes above it, up in a bracket, right? I don't know, it's kind of buried in there, but it's right above this one. And this is the safety switch, so you can't start it in gear. So, you know, for my situation, I wanted to test the engine. So what you do, it's just a little push button switch, you know, two wire. And I just duct taped it, um, you know, all the way down. So you know, that way I can, you know, run the car without having to, because, you know, if I, of course, if I try to push this, it'll just blow a bunch of um, fluid all over the place. So I need to replace my clutch slave. Um, but anyhow, yeah, I guess it's common with Audis is these instrument clusters go bad. And it seems like with TTs, it's usually these two it always go, which is weird. Um... The fuel gauge uh, and this one, I you know, I don't even know if my fuel gauge is working actually. And I can't get, I don't think I get a live feed with my uh, OBD2 reader for my fuel level. But it's, it's interesting how this will read from this cluster um, and then this one from the, uh, the OBD2 port. Read, you know, of course it reads directly from the ECU. So they... Uh, so I thought maybe it was my sensor I was bad, but it's reading accurately otherwise, you know. So, something's up with this cluster. And plus, you know, my LED stuff here is getting all is bad as well. So I just thought I'd just shoot this um, video and get it uploaded for you uh, TT owners, I guess what they call the Mark 1, 2, is a 2000 through 2006, I believe is a Mark one. And this is just a front wheel drive model. So it's set up just a little bit differently on the tubing, the intake manifold. Um, then of course has an extra little, like a transfer case on the tranny to um, run a drive shaft to the rear uh, for the all wheel drive system. And then of course it has a little bit bigger uh, turbo on it. The K04, which this one I believe has a K03. Anyhow, thanks for watching.